of which is to is uh, let's check your progress so today is video number four of this series so this series is basically to uh, check your progress that whether you are preparing in line with the UPSC or not so please uh, before starting please don't consider it as the final test of your uh, reading capability so uh, the top the questions the topic that may be covered uh, in this uh, video may you might not have read that uh, particular topic or you might not have read that uh, that subject but certainly uh, this uh, the purpose of this video Video is true that uh, if you have covered then attempt the attempt the uh, uh, questions and if you haven't covered then uh, start covering it and at least uh, follow these questions so uh, in which way these questions will help you these questions if can if in case you haven't read the topic this these type of questions will help you in getting an idea about how the questions are framed uh, what uh, what type of things are important for uh, uh, to be to be read, that are to be read uh, for the purpose of preparation in case in in course of your reading because reading is the uh, that thing which is done by every person it is not just done by you as a aspirant but uh, in india a lot of people are doing reading just for their uh, uh, for, for the purpose of their hobby or for uh, for uh, many uh, many other reasons so this video will give you an idea and if in case you have covered the topic then certainly this will help you in recalling the facts so take this video in this manner I, I, I strongly say that that don't consider it as uh, the final test on your uh, uh, entire preparation that whether you are preparing well or not so let's start our discussion so today we will be discussing questions about environment topic so consider that which of the following activities will contribute to coral bleaching first acidification of oceans second rising sea surface temperature third uncontrolled fishing fourth uncontrolled navigation so which of the answer you uh, you have to select the correct answer using the code given below so you can pause the video you can uh, think about it that what could be the answer and then you can mark your answer and then you can listen to uh, listen further so answer is friends d because it, it is quite easy if uh, there is there is, there is a uh, certain conditions in which coral coral reef survive uh, that is uh, they don't they can't survive in too much uh, acidic uh, uh, water or too much basic water so also they they require uh, 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 we can say a certain range of temperature above which they can't survive and also then fishing is taking place which is uh, harming the coral reefs and then also navigation uh, uh, disturb, disturbs the, uh, the balance that they maintain the uh, the, the, the turbidity the, the, that this navigation brings uh, affects the coral reefs adversely so all of these are the reasons so about coral bleaching is that coral face stress by changes in conditions such as temperature light nutrients because they have a kind of uh, 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 living organism microorganism that is uh, uh, that lives in the tissues that is used and late. It, it, it forms a symbiotic relationship with the, these coral uh, coral reefs so uh, then uh, if in case zooxanthellae is exp uh, expelled out of the body then this pr process is called cr uh, coral breaching so uh, the, uh, the, uh, the in, uh, mostly these coral reefs are, are colorful but when uh, when the zooxanthellae are expelled they turn white and uh, the, this basically is this is called as coral breaching so it is uh, coral breaching is known to be responsible for killing approximately 18 percent of the world's coral reefs so different causes are there for coral uh, coral bleaching so they are discussed here Acid acidification is there temperature is there and then uh, uncontrolled fishing and uncontrolled navigation is also there then sub aerial exposure it can also be there fresh water dilution so rapid dilution of free waters from storm generator precipitation and runoff has also demonstrated that uh, coral bleaching ha uh, happens so it tends to reduce salinity so uh, optimum salinity for them is uh, 35 parts per million so uh, generally such bleeding bleaching events are rare and confined confined to relatively small and near shore areas and then xenobiotic uh, uh, reasons can also be uh, responsible so zoos and loss occurs during exposure of coral to elevated concentrations of various chemical contaminants such as uh, copper herbicides and oil so all of these re reasons are responsible so now let's move to the next question next is consider the following statements regarding ecosystem first non-living components of the environment are not the part of the ecosystem second edaphic factors are the components of uh, ecosystem third biome is the form of subcontinental ecosystem having similarity in vegetation fourth ecosystem is the structural and functional unit of biosphere so we have to choose that which of these 
is correct so let me tell you friends uh, certainly first statement is not correct because uh, uh, live non-living components are also part of ecosystem so, so straightforwardly you can ignore the uh, uh, the a option and the c option and then comes your uh, b and d so you have to mark out of these so let's see what is the answer so answer is d so adaptive factors are the components of uh, your ecosystem and uh, uh, basically a defect is a component relating to soil especially as it affects living organisms so it, these characteristics include factors such as water content acidity aeration and availability of nutrients so influenced by factors inherent in the soil rather than by climatic fa factors so other things are too simple that uh, they hardly need any explanation here so uh, the answer is d so you can if you want to read the explanation you can pause the video now let's move to the next question next is consider the following statement statements related to biodiversity hotspots first eastern himalayas and western ghats are biodiversity hotspots in india second the biodiversity hotspots are mostly confined to the tropical regions of the world third it represents regions that have experienced considerable habitat loss but not uh, present changing land use pattern so we have to choose that which of these statement is are incorrect so please note the word word is incorrect so you have to choose that you can pause the video so the answer is uh, uh, basically it must be uh, none so the answer is d so uh, all are correct so eastern himalayas and western ghats are uh, biodiversity hotspots and then biodiversity hotspots are mostly confined to tropical regions yes this is true and then obviously when uh, one and two is correct you uh, then third is also correct it represents basically uh, regions that have experienced considerable habitat loss but not uh, present changing land use pattern so statement 3 is also correct so biodiversity hotspot do not make allowances for changing land use patterns so hotspots represent the regions that have experienced considerable habitat loss but this does not mean that they are experiencing ongoing habitat loss on the other hand regions that are relatively intact that is amazon basin have experienced relatively little land loss but are uh, currently losing habitat at tremendous rates so this is the answer for this question now let's move to the next question next is for the protection of environment protected area network is developed across uh, across the country which of the following is are correct about protected area network in india first wildlife protection act provides for declaration of wildlife sanctuary only and national parks are declared under environment protection act second is national parks enjoy greater degree of uh, protection than wildlife sanctuary the national parks are species centric and wildlife sanctuaries are uh, region centric so you have to choose that which of these is correct so you can pause the video so the answer is c that is second only uh, first is not correct and third is not correct but yes second is correct national parks enjoy greater degree of protection than wildlife sanctuary so wildlife it is basically protected area network is created under wildlife protection act so natural parks and sanctuaries uh, uh, they are either they are areas of significant ecological floral faunal and natural significance so they are notified by state governments please note this word these national parks and the sanctuaries are notified by state governments and they are protected by the forest departments under the provisions of the wildlife protection act indian forest act forest act of 1980 biological diversity act and then scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of forest rights act 2006 so hunting of wild animals encroachment and destruction of habitat and lot of other things like construction of two tourist lodges uh, are, are prohibited in such protected areas so st statement 2 is correct national protect uh, national parks enjoy greater degree of protection so it is a protected area which is reserved for the conservation of biodiversity so where no inf human inf interference in any of the form of harvesting of timber or collecting minor forest products and private ownership is allowed so while a wildlife sanctuary is a protected area which is reserved for the conservation of biodiversity and human activities uh, like harvesting of timber collecting minor forest products and private ownership rights are allowed so as long as they do not interfere with the well-being of animals so while most of these provisions are common for sanctuaries and national parks there are four key differences first is the all rights of people within a national national park have to be settled while in a sanctuary certain rights can be allowed so then uh, uh, livestock grazing is prohibited in a national park but can be allowed in a regulated manner in sanctuaries and a sanctuary can be upgraded to a national park but uh, but a national park cannot be downgraded to a sanctuary so statement 3 is incorrect Correct. So boundaries of sanctuaries are not well defined and controlled biotic interference is permitted. So while the boundaries of national park are well defined 
and no biotic interference is permitted so please no, note the word uh, the boundaries of wildlife sanctuaries are not well defined whereas the boundaries of national park are well defined so that's why no biotic interference is allowed in case of later that is national park so wildlife sanctuary are species centric so uh, a wildlife sanctuary may be protecting a particular species but then uh, and focusing on certain species and national parks are basically region centric so it was written uh, 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 we can say it's by changing the order now let's move to the next question next is which of the following statements is are correct uh, uh, is are correct about biosphere reserve first the entire biosphere reserve area prohibits the entry of humans second neither existing national park no wildlife sanctuary can be the part of the biosphere reserve so we have to choose that which of these statements is correct so the answer is d neither one nor two so entire uh, this is not the thing that the entire biosphere area prohibits the entry of humans because uh, in biosphere reserve there is core area and then there is buffer area and all such things so uh, first is also clearly wrong and uh, this is not the case that national park or wildlife sanctuary can uh, uh, can be uh, can be part of biosphere reserve in fact there are many biosphere reserves reserves which are home to as national parks as well as wildlife sanctuaries so answer would be d neither one nor two so biosphere reserves are nominated by national governments and remain under the sovereign jurisdiction of states where they are located so their status is internationally recognized so statement one is correct so biosphere reserves are the perfect living examples of coexistence of humans and animals so the entire biosphere reserve does not prohibit the entry of humans core transition zone and buffer zone have different nature of restriction so biosphere reserves have three interrelated zones that aim to fulfill three complementary and mutually in reinforcing functions that is core area comprises a strictly protected ecosystem that contributes to the conservation of landscapes ecosystem species and genetic variation and then there is buffer zone that surrounds or adjoins the core area and is um, used for activities compatible with the sound ecological practices that can reinforce scientific research monitoring training and education and then transition area is that part of the reserve where the greatest activity is allowed so first comes core area and then buffer for then transition so this is when we move from uh, from the inner side of a biosphere reserve uh, to to outer side so um, here the greatest activity is allowed in case of transition area fostering economic and human development that is socio culturally and ecologically significant so statement 2 is incorrect uh, the indian government has established uh, 18 biosphere reserves of india which protect large larger areas of natural habitat than a national park or wildlife sanctuary so they are the biggest ent entity among the three so please note this that biosphere reserves are the biggest entity among the three and level of uh, restriction increase is, is in the is uh, in the increasing order is biosphere reserves and then wildlife sanctuaries and then na national parks so highest restriction is uh, there in uh uh, the level of restriction in, uh, is there in national parks and lowest restriction is there in biosphere reserves because certain activities are permitted in biosphere reserves in the buffer and transition areas so uh, so this is all about your today's discussion and uh, uh, if you have uh, performed if you have scored 3 to 4 uh, marks then it is good if you haven't scored then it is more good because you have learned something today uh, which you 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 were not knowing so always be uh, be uh, be uh, keep, keep your mind in a way that you look at the things in a positive manner because ultimately if you not if you if you will not see this video if you keep on uh, deafening things then certainly uh, that would cost you but if in case you have uh, 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 seen the video and if in case you uh, felt that you didn't knew all these things then why to worry about it you knew now you you know you know it now so obviously you have learned something so don't worry about the things marks and all those things and if in case you want to fine tune your preparation then you can join our various courses and here we have uh, a slide added of our geography and CRT course in which we we uh, we will be covering your all the NCRTs from 6 to 12 uh, in just rupees 149 so in this you will be daily given a target and in the evening you will get 10 MCQs from that target so in this way uh, your uh, all NCRTs from 6 to 12 will be covered in 45 days so in a way you will be having 450 MCQs based upon NCRTs on the 45th day so single magazine will be shared with you people that will be the compilation of all 450 NCRT based MCQs so how it will benefit you so obviously friends you might be aware of the fact that NCRTs are 
the foundations so each and every ncrt will be covered uh, from class 6 to 12th and coverage of entire geography will be through mcq mode and it will ensure discipline in your studies because most of the students uh, today prepare from home so they are not in cities but the problem is with discipline so this uh, this targeted approach framework based approach uh, and she will ensure discipline in your studies and also the problem of revising ncrts will also be solved because all important topics will be there in the mcqs will be covered in mcqs and these mcqs will be provided with in detail explanations to their answers so uh, when you will be uh, revising uh, these things you will not have to revise ncrts again and again so you can go through single pdf that will be compilation of 450 mcqs and then you can uh, uh, revise uh, all the ncrts and then also you might be aware of the fact that geography ncrts are widely believed to the best to be the most comprehensive ncrts if we uh, if we take uh, uh, ncrts of different uh, among di uh, ncrts of different subjects so also then mere reading is not enough as i have told you because reading is done by every individual who has the hobby of reading so you must prepare in a manner uh, that the in in a manner that upsc in in, in which the upsc demands so uh, that uh, that that thing is very important that that perspective of reading is very important and that comes only with practice so also then discipline preparation gives you much needed confidence self confidence and also now is the best time to start because your prelims is just 6 months away so there is uh, there is not much time left so don't proca procrastinate things uh, and uh, if in case you are interested to join then you can join you Using this link that will that is shown on your screen so this link will also be provided in the description box so if in case you are interested to join then you are more than welcome to join our initiative so this is all about friends today's video if you like this video if you like the initiative if you like the discussion then do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel so thank you friends have a very nice day